Hello, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today's Monday, the 26th of May, 2008. It's Memorial Day, and uh, the markets are obviously closed. Let's take a look at the uh, where we uh, stand right now, heading into a new week of trading. The market, as we know, came up and tested this trend line a week or so ago, and last week we saw that uh, the 200-day moving average, which is still declining and has been giving me reason for concern, um, the, the market penetrated that briefly, but then started to sell off. And it, as I said, it wouldn't surprise me to see this market come back down towards that 50-day moving average. That's exactly where we are right now. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, you know, this, this area had been in uh, a level of concern up near this prior level of support from last year, and rightfully so, as that is where we saw some sellers in here. And now we've got this pattern of higher highs and higher lows uh, on the daily time frame broken. So you can see here that this little pattern that we've enjoyed on the long side over the last couple months has in fact been broken. And I think that, uh, you know, it's likely that we'll see a bounce probably up towards these uh, moving averages here, the 10 and 20 day moving average. But, but there's clearly some longer term resistance still that needs to be worked through here before we can really breathe easy on the long side. We've seen that the market had, uh, uh, been rallying on diminishing volume, and that gives us reason for concern always. Uh, but again, only price pays, and when the market came in last week, we saw uh, that it did, in fact, trade heavier volume as people rushed for the exits to lock in profits uh, from the rally of the last few weeks. So when we look at a shorter-term time frame, uh, such as the 30-minute time frame, we see here, here's where that breakdown began, and, uh, you know, we've seen just a, a steady pattern where, Last week, um, you know, we saw that rally back up towards the five-day moving average. It had resistance there, and then it broke below that support at 141, came down hard, uh, and formed another level of consolidation. And uh, Friday, of course, we saw the lower end of that region broken, and uh, this market's declining once again. So if we take a look now at an hourly time frame, we can uh, kind of get a little bit better handle on, uh, you know, this longer-term trend line, which was clearly broken. Uh, from the uh, March lows, basically. And you can see where we are. If we just draw a uh, horizontal trend line on here, uh, we're, we're near that 138 level, which had been in, uh, important before. So 137.5 to 138, uh, realistically, is an area where we might expect to see a bounce materialize from. The market's come down pretty hard here the last few days, and I think it took a lot of people off guard. Um, and again, you know, just because we had this, uh, this, this prior rally, you, you can never become complacent. When the market starts showing these pat this pattern of lower highs and lower lows, you've got to move quickly uh, to lock in your gains. I showed some of the trades I made last week. They were all very short-term oriented trades, um, any of the long side trades were, because that's what the market is telling me right now, is you've got to be quick. Uh, and, and that's something that I repeated a couple times last week. Either you've got to be very quick in this market, or you've got to be longer term oriented and just kind of be patient sidelines on the cash a lot of people have been asking uh, you know is, is day trading what that book of, of mine is all about it's not about day trading i'm day trading now because that's what the market is telling me to do the book itself is about understanding market structure the way i lay it out here each and every day and finding your comfortable time frame to trade on so that you can make this analysis work for you, whether you want to be a swing trader, investor, or day trader, whatever it may be. That's what that book is about. Uh, but going into next week, we're still in a downtrend here in the short term for the S&P 500. Um, we've got to see this five-day moving average begin to flatten out before you can really trust any rally attempt in here. And you see we had uh, heavier volume at the end of the day once again. Uh, the S&P 500 on a one-day, you know, one-minute time frame, we closed right down near the lows. So there's still a lot of reasons to be cautious on this market. Perhaps the biggest reason for concern continues to be the financial sector. And as I, you know, as I'll continue to repeat, if they don't scare you out on the way down, they'll typically wear you out. Don't look for this market to make big rally attempts in here. This market is very severely damaged. I wouldn't be surprised to see a test of the Bear Stearns lows. And if that low, you know, test came on lighter volume, then maybe it's good for a, a, a trade uh, bounce. But, you know, we've still got this potential for support here uh, that we're just above at 2440 in the financials. These moving averages are all cr crossing back and forth, telling you that it's, it's basically losing some of the volatility. The uh, momentum is out of this market, and really there's, there's no sense, in my opinion, to, to be trading it.
except for aggressive trades. It just remains uh, badly damaged. So any rally attempt in here has to be continue to be viewed with an eye of suspicion. And uh, it's going to continue to, uh, to to drag on the uh, S&P 500. The NASDAQ, well, let's take a look at the, fine, uh, the uh, IWM, the Russell 2000. Uh, again, we, we saw the market close for about three or four days above that $73 level. It came up to the uh, declining 200-day moving average. And again, it's not always an exact precise number such as 73, but it's more a level that this prior level of support tends to act as resistance in this area. And you can call it 73 to $75. And it looks as though clearly we were seeing uh, that there are, there are sellers there, and this could lead to a more significant sell-off, so don't be quick to get it back in on the long side, except for very short-term trades. We've seen, uh, you know, excess speculation really in, in some of the uh, the solar and shipping companies, and, and when you get those real fast moves, it often indicates that speculation is real high, and that's when uh, conditions are, are ripe for a correction, like we're seeing in here now. Um, Let's try and find some positives in here. Well, we've got the uh, you know 50-day moving average, which is advancing. That's at about $71 a share. So perhaps that will be an area where uh, where buyers are found, um, and that's also approximately where you see this little trend line starting to form. So uh, you know maybe near 71 we get some support, but you know don't look for new purchases in there until the market begins to stabilize on a shorter term time frame. We clearly have lower highs and lower lows here on this 10 minute time frame and of course obviously we're going to see the same thing on the uh, on the 30 minute time frame with these lower lows and lower highs we've got a declining five day moving average and uh, in, this looks like you know that 71 level seems to be an area that for a few reasons that I just outlined the 50 day moving average the trend line and just the prior uh, trading that occurred in there the prior support level makes 71 look like a, a likely area that this market may settle down in uh, if the, this market continues to sell off down towards that level so continue to be very cautious in here we still have a lot of mixed messages across different time frames we've got uh, you know big trouble on the weekly time frame potentially if it can't somehow recover back above 75 it's going to need to be above 75 realistically i think to uh to to, to give us confidence on the long side um, now let's take a look at the uh, the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ 100, as we know, ran into a little bit of re uh, selling up near the two-thirds retracement of the November highs down to the uh, mid-May low, March lows, rather. And, uh, you know, in here we've still got this uptrend line that's uh, intact from the uh, from the March lows. I think that that's potentially where we're going to see this market, market settle uh, in the, in the, in the, into this coming week. But... You know that's only a potential level of support. We also see that we're you know still hanging around that 200-day moving average, and uh, you know finding support at this level where 47 you know 47.75 to 48 dollars a share. If that doesn't hold, then it's potentially uh, you know I think we're looking at a uh, a test of that 46 level, which had been important on the way up. And uh, maybe just, a, you know, maybe 46 to 46 and a half, where we have that 50-day moving average in this prior level of resistance, which was broken, tested as support, and led to the, the, this rally in here. So basically, going into this new week, um, you know, we're at that 48 level, continues to, you know, be an area uh, of support. So maybe we get a little bit of bounce in here. Don't trust it until you get this 50-day, I'm, I'm sorry, the five-day moving average to kind of at least flatten out like it did over here. And then perhaps we can see uh, that it becomes uh, a better opportunity for some longs. But right now, going into a new week, um, you know, we've dropped uh, two and a half points here last week in the, in the NASDAQ. And, uh, uh, you know, odds favor maybe a little bit of consolidation and then a, uh, you know, a rally that may create a lower high. It's too early to call. Let's just keep an eye on where the potential support and resistance levels are. And if the market breaks down significantly through 47.75 or so, then I think you're going to see a uh, resumption of the selling down towards that 46 to 46 and a half level. So a lot of reasons to continue to be very cautious and take it on a stock-by-stock -stock basis. On my blog, I've got uh, 
I think about 10 or 12 long trades potentially setting up and uh, 10 or 12 short trades setting up as well. A lot of those uh, long side trades are energy related and, and oil continues to be uh, in this in, in this strong uptrend, it's it's trading big volume out up here in the last few days without further upside, uh, and a lot of times that indicates distribution. But this trend is clearly still higher. There is no evidence of a top in in, in oil, so um, you know just continue to be careful with the trends. If you're long oil, just keep your stops tight because uh, you know big reversals can come quickly in this type of uh, extended market.